Hello and welcome back to the RDF Tactics YouTube channel. My name is RDF of course and today's video we have one absolutely crazy formation to show you. I mean it's asymmetric of course but it's absolutely crazy and the best part of it all is successful. So what we're going to do we're going to look at the tactic we're going to analyze it a little bit and then we're going to check the results. We tested it with two teams Vitoria over in Portugal and Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga. The tactic was created by Alex007 on FM Scout. That is where the tactic will be downloadable. The link will be in the description. And before we get stuck into this amazing tactic, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. Make sure you like this video. Also, leave a comment if you have any recommendations or any feedback. It helps a lot. And lastly, check out this app from OneFootball. I'm proud to announce that the RDF Tactics YouTube channel has teamed up with OneFootball. It's a great footballing app. If you haven't tried it out before, then make sure you do. It's free, so why not? You have nothing to lose and the link is in the description below. My personal favourite thing about the app is receiving the latest news, transfer rumours, tracking live scores, but also, and of course, getting match stats so I can make videos just like this one. There's a video section as well, it's a pretty cool app where you can watch football highlights, historic moments and even post or pre-match conferences. I'm currently using the app to receive news on my favourite team as you have the option to do so. It's a really good app to get your daily football updates and football news. So give it a go, it's completely free and I promise you, you won't look back and remember, the link is in the description below. So here we're on the FM Scout website, the tactic is called 007 433 Triangle version 5. We are now on the fifth version and now you're looking at the shape and it's absolutely crazy. It doesn't look like it makes sense, but believe me, it really does make sense. So here he greets himself, he says hello. There is a new tactical base on his previous system, so I'm guessing he's done something similar to this before. He encountered some space issues to the strikers, then he decided to change a few things a lot of responsibilities on front of the goal. You will need a tool and technical striker to the left, I believe that's a target man, to control the air and then have fast wingers and wing backs. The tactic is playing a triangle system combination from the defence to attack and then he says thank you and good luck. So with that, let's look at the tactic and see if we can get any luck with this tactic. So here we are, triangle version 5 domination and it it really does dominate. I have played a few games myself with this tactic. I mean, I was just really intrigued how it would play out on the match engine. And then I did a few holiday tests, which you will see now. I've tested it with Victoria. I then tested it with Borussia Dortmund. It done really well with those teams. So I thought, what happens if we tried it with Liverpool? It just dominated, but I didn't really see any point showing you results with Liverpool. So with this tactic, we're going to go through the team instructions, the player roles and instructions, check out the results from the two teams and then close the video. So, for the team instructions, the mentality is on positive, the attacking width is set to wide, pass into space, focus through the middle and play out from the defence. For the passing directness, we are using the shorter passing with the higher tempo, I love that combination, probably the most effective on Football Manager 2021. For the dribbling, we are using dribble less, which is not used very often and for the creative freedom, be more expressive, always a positive thing. In transition, when the possession has been lost, you are going to be counter-pressing. When the possession has been won, you are going to be making your counter-movements. When the goalkeeper is in possession, he is going to distribute it quickly and distribute it to the flanks. Again, a very intriguing tactical setup there. Even though he is focusing through the middle, he's got his goalkeeper distributing it to the flanks. Out of possession now, we have a higher line of engagement. The defensive line is set to higher. The defensive width is set to wide. So we are forcing the opposition inside and we are going to be covering as much of the pitch as we can. For the present intensity, we are going to be using extremely urgent, prevent the short goalkeeper distribution and for the tackling, get stuck in. Very aggressive. For the player roles and instructions for the goalkeeper, he's on support, he's a sweeper keeper and he's instructed to tackle harder. In central defence, we have one central defender on the stopper duty He's instructed to take fewer risks while his partner is a ball playing defender. He's instructed to dribble less, but his duty is to defend. For the fullback on the right, he's a fullback on the support duty. He's got a few instructions. More direct passes, take fewer risks, cross aim to the centre, dribble less, run wide with the ball, shoot less often and sit narrower alongside tackle harder. 
in defensive midfield we have a halfback on the defend duty of course he's got a few instructions which of course you can just copy off the screen right now for the left wing back he's on the attacking duty he's got a few instructions as well such as take fewer risks cross aim to the center shoot less often and tackle harder in central midfield we have a roman playmaker he's going to be passing it shorter tackling harder marking tighter on the right we have a wide midfielder on the attacking duty he just got so many instructions again you can just copy the instructions off the screen right now in attacking midfield we have an attacking midfielder on the attacking duty he's going to be playing more direct passes taking more risk dribbling more moving into the channels closing down more and marking tighter up front we have a very very nice combination of a target man and a poacher the target man is on the attacking duty he's instructed with more direct passes take more risk stay wider and mark tighter whilst the poacher he's got a couple instructions as well pass it shorter move into channels dribble less and ease off the tackles that there wraps up the team and player instructions we are now going to shift over to the results and see how well this tactic did it's a crazy formation i know you guys are interested to see the results so let's head over right now So in the Portuguese top tier, Vitoria played 34 games, they won 23, drew 4, lost 7 with a goal difference of plus 41 and a points tally of 73. We are actually on joint points with Sporting CP as well. Vitoria I believe are predicted to finish 5th, yes they are, so we did beat our expectations and we have now qualified for the UEFA Champions League. For the Portuguese Cup we got knocked out in the 4th round and in the Allianz Cup we got knocked out in the semi-final by Braga. In the Portuguese league we scored the second most goals with 81, we had the fourth most shots at goal with the third fewest shots against us, for the best pass completion we came in sixth with 87% and we have 54% of the ball. For the most clean sheets we came in eighth with 11 clean sheets, for the fewest conceded we came in sixth with 40 goals conceded. For the dribbles made of course, the tactical instruction is to dribble less so we aren't expected to be in this list right here. But we can also see for the expected goals we came in second with 62.7 with the crosses completed we came in fourth for the passes completed we came in third with 13,992 very impressive in the portuguese league for vitoria for the conversion rate in the portuguese league we did come out on top with 16 percent we did commit the most fouls in the league which is fairly disappointing but when it comes to tackles one we came in second which is equally impressive and when it comes to the possession one we actually topped that table as well so maybe giving away too many fouls isn't too much of an issue for the player overall our two strikers were the top two goal scorers in the portuguese league very impressive lao foster and oscar i just can't pronounce that guy's surname he scored 15 goals anyway and lao foster managed to score 18. for the most assist again it's our player with rashina on 14 assist marcus edwards on 13. For the most shots, Lau Foster came in second. For the most man of the matches, we got Gideon Mensah on five, Oscar on four, and Lau Foster also on four. For the most key passes, we have Marcus Edwards on 123. For the most tackles, one we have Andre Andre. What a name! He made the most tackles in the league with 142, with Gideon Mensah there on 120. For the most clean sheets, our goalkeeper is joint fifth, and for the fewest conceded, well our goalkeeper is just not on that list now for the team report victoria were very aggressive and clinical in the portuguese league our attacking statistics were very interesting as it says we managed more shots per match than average and we were more clinical than a lot of other teams well we were the most clinical in the league for our defensive efficiency we faced fewer shots per game than average but we concede more goals than what would be expected from the number of shots that we face so we were quite leaky in that sense but overall we were quiet if you got some better defenders at this team i mean there's no doubt you would perform better defensively but how did we score most of our goals 55 were play shots and only 11 were headers 33 of our assists came from through balls and 17 came from crosses but we're now going to check our squad stats before moving to Borussia Dortmund's results our squad stats, the top goal scorer in all competitions, Lau Foster managed to score 23 goals in 24 starts. Mad impressive there. Oscar scored 19 in 28 starts. Marcus Edwards managed to score 12 goals in 35 starts. Marcus Edwards, by the way, what a talent he is on this game. 
Rashina scored 11 goals in 27 starts while Bruno Duarte managed to score 11 goals also in 21 starts. Who had the most assists? Rashina had 18 assists in all competition, Marcus Edwards had 15 and I am not at all surprised by that. Bruno Duarte also got 10 assists and he was a striker, very impressive so if we just click on his profile, well he's likely to have played as a target man and you can see that the target man is equally as impressive creating than he is at goal scoring. But we are now going to check Borussia Dortmund and how well they did. Hopefully, we got a trophy or two. So, for Dortmund, as you can see already on this screen, Dortmund were the league champions. Well, equal on points with Bayern Munich. Absolutely crazy there. Marco Reus scored 40 goals in all competitions. Let me repeat that. Marco Reus scored 40 goals in all competitions. The highest average rated player was Haaland with 7.33. And if we check his stats, he only managed to play 24 games in the Bundesliga, but he did score 23 goals, so imagine if he did manage to play more games. Dortmund could have more points come the end of the season. Jadon Sancho had the most assists, Marco Royce had the most man of the match awards with 11, of course he did, he scored 40 goals. But in the Bundesliga, we played 34 games, we won 25, we drew 5 and we only lost 4. We scored the most goals in the league with 85 and we had one of the better defences with 33 and ended with 80 points on the board. So when it comes to average possession we have 51% so just about over half. When it comes to goals we scored the most goals as we said before. For the expected goals we came out on top with 64 expected goals throughout the whole season. When it comes to passes completed Dortmund came in fourth so impressive again with 13,655 passes completed. For the clear-cut chances created, Dortmund came out on top again with 38 clear-cut chances, by far the best in the Bundesliga. For the conversion rate, Dortmund came out on top, so again we came out on top on the conversion rate. This tactic is very, very clinical I must say. And for the shots per game, we are averaging around 13 shots per game. Defensively, we've done very well. We had the third best defence in the league and for the fouls made we did come out on second so again we committed a lot of fouls but when it comes to the tackles won we topped that table with 899 tackles won throughout the whole season. And when we look at the possession won we came second in that regard as well so off the ball this tactic is very very effective you may give away a few fouls but you do also win the ball a lot. For the players for the top goal scorer and <laughs> Once again, our two strikers are the two top goal scorers. Haaland managed to score 23 goals and so did Marco Reus. For the most assists, again, it is our player, Jaden Sancho with 15 assists. Borgen Hazard managed to get 9. For the most shots, Marco Reus came in joint second while Haaland came in third. For the most man of the match awards, Haaland came out on top, Marco Reus, well, joint top as well. For the key passes, we have nobody there, but for the most clean sheets, our goalkeeper is joint 5th and for the fewest conceded, our goalkeeper comes in 8th place. For Dortmund's attacking efficiency, just look at this graph, absolutely incredible. Dortmund were aggressive and clinical but by far the most clinical side in the Bundesliga. That is always a positive, we were aggressive in our approach but whilst being aggressive, we were very very clinical. For our defensive efficiency, we were quiet and impenetrable so like I was saying with Victoria, if they had better individual defenders, maybe they would have done better defensively and maybe they would have been a little closer to that league title. Dortmund wrapped up the league title though, they had better defenders and that just shows how great this tactic can be. How did Dortmund score most of their goals? 55 from play shots, I'm positive that was the same for Victoria as well. But Dortmund also scored 16 powerful shots and only one header. Literally, it says one header. Absolutely crazy. For the assist, 46 of them came from through balls and 14 came from crosses. That is how Dortmund scored their goals, that is how they created their goals. We're now going to look at the squad stats before ending this tactical video. So, so Marco Royce got 40 goals in 46 games, not even making one sub-appearance. Haaland also not making one sub-appearance. He managed to score 29 goals in 37 appearances. Giovanni Reyna managed to score 10 and Jadon Sancho also managed to score 10. Sancho also got 25 assists, Rafael Guerrero got 12 while Fulgen Hazard also got 12 in all competitions. But that there, unfortunately ladies and gentlemen, wraps up this tactical video for Football Manager 2021. My name is RDF, it's been a pleasure recording this video for you guys, make sure you guys head over to FM Scout as well, 
to download this tactic make sure you try it out it's incredible it is fantastic i will see you guys soon peace out and stay safe see ya